and welcome to the Law of Positivism podcast. I'm your host, Shireen, and I'm the creator of Law of Positivism. I'm here to help you on your spiritual and healing journey. I am a certified yoga and meditation teacher, a student of Chinese medicine, a doula, a Reiki practitioner, and a passionate, highly sensitive person. I want to use my knowledge to channel information and messages for you to grow on all levels. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of the podcast. I'm so grateful that you're here. And this week I have the amazing and inspirational priestess of nature, Rebecca Tiger. She's a holistic feministic herbarista and a vaginal steam facilitator. And she's been using herbs in rituals, ceremony and as medicine for years and has learned a lot around all of the natural healing and just beautiful medicine that is available in nature through her own path of healing and she's found so much wisdom so much magic in this and she shares this with so many women it's very inspirational I love her work and she does facilitate women's circles ceremonies healings she does one-to-one consultations online and also in in her uh, private practice and she's really just a yeah a priestess who who just is here to enlighten others and to bring back these very powerful uh, energies within us all especially when it comes to the, the divine feminine and the goddess and in this topic we cover some topics around herbs for healing and ceremony. We talk about cycles of the moon and also new moon rituals. Uh, we get into yoni steaming, what it is and why it's beneficial. And we also talk about herbs that could be good for regulating your cycles and PMS and all of these things. And I'm really excited about this episode. I think uh, everyone needs to hear this and to just bring more of this awareness back to our own body to find our own intuitive wisdom within us and to also work intuitively with plants and nature and realizing that all of the healing everything we need is out there because nature is also a part of ourselves so we are one with nature so I'm really grateful that you're here and thank you so much to everyone who has shared the episodes and the podcast on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, written reviews on iTunes. For all of you, thank you. I always do a free oracle card reading for everyone who do share the episode or leaves a review on iTunes. It really helps the podcast to grow and for more people to find th- this information and this wisdom that all my guests are sharing on these episodes so thank you so much and enjoy today's episode hi rebecca welcome to the podcast hello hi i'm so excited that you're here yeah me too welcome thank you thank you for the invitation of course. I'm really excited about our conversation and I always start the conversation by asking how do you stay mindful and present? Like you mean during these uh, special times or in general? In times? general. Yeah, in general. Yeah, I um uh, I use a lot um of my time in the nature, in the forest, mm-hmm. and I make sure I I always stay in tune with the shifting of nature, and I follow her. So when the winter starts shedding and coming into spring, I make sure I'm aware of that in me and outside of me, and I honor that. So I would say that I am honoring the cycles within me and in nature. 
Mm. That helps me to actually all the time um, find some calmness and reality. Mm. That's beautiful. Nature is the best healer. Um, Yeah, so I'm really excited to have you here to talk about everything that you do and uh, for you to share your wisdom with everyone. We've known each other for a while and worked together as well. So I'm just uh, very grateful that you're here. And maybe you can start by sharing um, yeah, your journey and w- what it is that you actually do to start with for the listeners to get to know you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, I'm um, a priestess of nature which means that I work with ceremonies Mm -hmm. and um, I do vaginal steam as Mm -hmm. a vaginal steam facilitator. (laughs) These are these two things that I work a lot with right now to create ceremonies, to create and hold space, um, not just for people who need ceremonies, but for everybody because I am a lover of ceremony. And I'm a lover of rituals. And I see a lack <clears throat> in our modern Western society. Uh, we have replaced rituals and ceremonies with nothing, I feel. So there's um, a spiritual muted community sometimes. And it makes me it makes me really sad. And therefore, I had to leave it. You know, if you want to get to know me, you should know that before this last five years, I'm I'm a trained actor and an artist and a director within the theater and and showbiz. And I still love it and I still perform sometimes, but I had to change everything around to be able to comprehend. So... It was actually quite a long journey for me, 20 years within the business and um, always in balancing between these two sides of mine, the the glitter and glamour and showbiz and uh, going from one place to another and just getting these kicks all the time and Mm -hmm. being able to go into a world and be someone else and portray that person and tell that story. And then on the other side, I always had the the nature and the herbs and the mysteries and the magic. And and I had a hard time getting these two sides of me joined together. Mm. And as always, when things are, (laughs) when you solve things, they're so obvious. So I just came to a point where I just put them together. So I would say that right now I am working a lot like my basic income is a lot from working with vaginal steam uh, guiding women and men and trans people into using this ancient method to learn more about themselves their power their vagina their uterus Uh, but also I guide and I hold a place to to people to step into ceremony and in that place, I can really use a lot of my work as a stage artist because I still tell stories, I still create worlds, but I don't have an audience applauding anymore. I am not the protagonist myself. I let people step into their own stories. Mm. Mm. That's beautiful. And... This, I'm thinking about, like, today is a magical day, right? It's a mm. new moon. <laughs> if we talk about ceremony and, and, and the cycles as well, like, okay, how do you see, like, what is your take on the new moon and, uh, and what kind of ceremonies is uh, appropriate at the, this beginning of a new cycle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's for me. I I always try to step into the days before the new moon, so the dark mm-hmm. moon. Mm-hmm. Really trying to embrace 
um, her darkness and her dark sides and letting me be embraced by the dark mother and and that I do to be able to when the new moon comes to be able to really start a new intention or if I failed with my intention that I wanted to do last cycle I can give it a try again but maybe I need to adjust it a little bit but I need that dark moon new moon they're very mm -hmm. joined together but there is um, like today is the new moon but yesterday and the day before were these pulling to the earth and you felt quite heavy and yeah. you, you I was really pulled inwards and when I embrace that it's easier for me to do any kind of new moon ceremony like I do different all the time and um, right now I think I'm going to do one according to the season we're in that mm -hmm. uh, we are in the north uh, the sun has come back mm. and the days are longer there's more light and you can really like start planting if you want to <laughs> so I will do a ceremony tonight that has a lot of uh, light and has a lot of warmth in it to be able to embrace new intention new ideas new projects or, you know, if you came up with the fact that you need to end something for something new to, to grow, you would embrace that breakup or that uh, work you have to do with light and warmth. Yeah, yeah it's, it's powerful. And in, um, in ceremony you use and rituals, uh, I assume uh, you also use different types of herbs. Am I correct? Yeah, I use herbs. I use uh, sound. I use the um, archetype of the goddess. I, um, I use, yeah, I use different tools to what comes to me. Mm. Intuitive for the ceremony. Mm. And for someone who's completely new into like herbalism and herbs, how, mm -hmm. how what is the like the tradition behind it, and what is it like? How how does it work? Well, I think, for example, one thing you can do if you're very new to holding a ceremony, uh, a very basic thing you would do is that you would use a herb, a dried herb. And you will uh, burn it to clear the place where you are in or also cleanse you from maybe energy that you don't have to take into this ceremony. But it also it's also when you burn different kind of herbs, you remember yourself mm -hmm. uh, in another way. It can be earlier lives, it can be a childhood memory or it can be, you know, some time when you felt something similar to that smell. So it puts you into a feeling also, or a mood. And um, it's, it, it's the maybe the most basic way of using herbs in ceremony. But uh, normally, the most common ones, even among Western society, might be sage mm. uh, white sage or palo santo but like here in the north nordic countries we can use um, groabo uh, mugwort mm. Mm. Uh, it's a very powerful um, plant to use when you work with ceremonies and you can use uh, iambar juniper berry mm. you can use pine you can use um uh, yeah, I don't know. What's it called in English? The Christmas tree tree? <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one. Uh, but basically, you can also make any kind of herbs into a bundle and then mm. let it dry and then you can burn it. But some last for longer and some some has a more pleasant smell when they're burned. Mm. And also for ceremonies, you can also, you don't have to burn plants. You can burn raisins, such as in many countries, you use frankincense or myrrh. Mm. 
or cobalt. But you can also use here, you can have these raisins from the trees, koda, mm. to burn on a charcoal. That also cleanses the space and brings, um, yeah, it makes you centered. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm just thinking from, like, the whole perspective, um, like, when we go back to our roots... From the beginning, we were in nature, right? Because we are nature. We're a part of nature. We're not separated. And uh, just going back, like the work that you're doing is to bring back like the knowledge of wis- and wisdom that we once had. And uh, in particular, if we look back in history and all times, uh, women have always been, the, the reason I mentioned also the, the lunar cycle is that we are connected through our own cycles to the to the cycles of the moon and if we were out in nature more and more aware and aware of this also divine feminine aspect of life uh, which we have forgotten then we would also be more attuned uh, which is is how we should be in nature like using our intuition and in that comes like the whole work that that you're doing which is is sacred work working with nature i see plants also as spirits and beings so they are very um yeah they are teachers to us and it can be very like intimidating and and or very empowering it can be very like it, i i think each plant can can bring up so much different things within you and then it's so amazing because I can see how and why plants have always been used as medicine. Um, it's, it's the origins of medicine. And we've, we've forgotten that. And when we look in, in different cultures, like if we look in, uh, for example, in India and Ayurveda, like a lot of the medicine is, is, is plant-based and, and based in herbs, right? And also in Chinese medicine, which I'm studying, it's like, yeah, the medicine that you get prescribed is is herbs, different types of herbs that they mix and, and, and also adapt to your constitution. So it's really, it can become very tailored for your own needs, which is, is not the case with like the medicine that we're using today. And so so you have, you as I, we've, we've come into this path uh, with, with the knowledge of our past lives as being wise women, women who, who worked with other women, healing, all of this. It all goes together, right? Yeah. yeah, and it's bringing back the wisdom. So I think that's a beautiful work and it's so important. And um, we have a big movement going on. I think, first of all, like for us to heal uh, the divine feminine within us uh, the, the divine doesn't need healing but all, but the, the all the life mothers that have come before us like the the wombs and everything that has been uh, passed down in in these lineages that we come from but also the experiences that we've had in our past lives like it's it's a lot to tie in and we're in a time right now where everything is changing so i i see that the work with that we're doing on individual level even if we're doing small things just being aware it also brings in the whole collective consciousness into awareness so i think it's really interesting to so you chose the path of the priestess. Like, how did how did that calling start for you? It's it's been with me, um, I think, all my life. But when I remember it the first time, I might have been, I don't know, I was very little, maybe five or six, and I really wanted my mother to tell me about the plants that she was planting, and she was planting like flowers just you know mm. flowers for the summer and I I really wanted her to to tell me more about them and she said oh I don't know this is this this is this I said but 
but what do it does what does it do and it has to have something more i mean who who eats from this plant and she's like no but they're here to be beautiful mm. so i remember like i really wanted somebody to ask about these flowers and i couldn't find anyone um you know mm. within my uh, birth family and um the older i got and the more i i got into books at a very young age and you know becoming a teenager i really went into the books about magic and witches and and uh, myths mm. of Arthur and uh, yeah fantasy but also like you know i would always uh, ask the libra- librarian if there was a healer in the book or something and mm. i i read um, herbal books and i was trying to use it but i I mean it's very hard when you're a teenager and trying to like (laughs) heal a wound from a Mm. book Uh, but i really tried and and uh, somewhere there i lost a little bit of faith and i was like oh this is i don't know what to do i don't get it so i kind of went into the to my theater studies (sighs) full on and i did that for like between i was maybe 18 till 22 something like that 21 but then somewhere around that journey I just I was getting tired it was so airy it was so um, I don't know I couldn't really deal with it because nothing was nothing was anything I could touch Mm. physical so I went into a health food shop and I asked if I could you know, I'm like, don't pay me. I just want to pack herbs. Mm-hmm. They're like, eh, okay, fine. So I was um, packing herbs. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, I got a job in this shop. And then I worked there for many, many years uh, mm-hmm. until I could completely uh, live on, on the theater mm-hmm. and the shows. And then when I started living on that, I, I had a hard time putting this life into it i mean i always did it for myself i never really did any other healing with myself except with herbs Mm. like no antibiotics no no i never really had had the need to go to a doctor uh because i didn't have any of those um uh, diseases or accidents so i i could heal at home Mm. and you know people would come and ask questions and i would be like yeah i tried this try this uh, but my friend would always call me the hippie or the Flemish person or mm. something like that or, or the herbal witch and stuff like that so I think it was from being so shattered with knowledge and books and workshops and shamanic workshop there and something there that I, I needed a teacher so therefore I just I read I read about priestess work like a modern priestess what does that what does a modern priestess do and I was thinking that this might be my path maybe this is how I can get everything together Mm. so I had very clear intention when I started with my teacher what I wanted to do and how I wanted to work and yeah I was not disappointed because as a priestess as a modern priestess I felt like I could really join everything that I know everything that my life has brought to me in knowledge in this life and everything that I have from before I can actually use Mm. here and now and somehow after many many years of searching I feel like it's coming together and it comes together as a as a strength so I think I just needed all this time to to figure out what I wanted to do because it was not just herbs it was not not just uh, rituals it was not just um, walking on my own lonely spiritual path you know I wanted to do something for the collective mm-hmm. because it's how who I am I've been an activist all my life as well so I need to work with people together with people mm. And uh, yeah, like you're saying, this knowledge that the elderly has, the, the plants, the trees, the stone, everything is already here. And we have a history in the north that is similar to, to Europe, that a lot of our knowledge is gone. A lot of women were burned. A lot of men were also burned. The church has been very strong um, and 
a lot of knowledge is gone and a lot of fear of course mm. a lot of fear when we um, had to had to hide knowledge so i think a lot of us are a little bit afraid to step forward because the of the earlier wounds priestess wounds or a, a witch's wound or just being a woman wound mm. or a man protected women so i think we all have to come together and uh, knowing that actually this modern society has another kind of justice another kind of state we have other legal rights so we don't have to fear the death we might have to fear stigma and being outcasts but if we have each other if we're in it together we're not outcasts anymore and that's where social media is one of the best tools for us right now because we can actually connect with each other all over this planet Mm -hmm. and i think that's also what makes the movement go forward because that makes the 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 lonely healer might be lonely in its community but that healer will get support from other healers all over the world so that that healer can actually work more in that physical place Mm -hmm. he or she lives And by being strong in that place, more people will come. Mm. You don't have to convince anyone. They will come. They are coming. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful and so important. The work is so important. And it all starts with becoming aware and uh, starting to see how our bodies are manifesting different type of energetic, spiritual wounds and memories within our body and I think many of us have lived very disconnected so if we maybe get into uh, maybe first uh, the cycles maybe connected to the moon like how do we work with with the different parts of our cycles to feel more empowered and feel more connected what would you recommend yeah, I would. I would recommend. Uh, um, well, first, I would recommend, of course, trying to be uh, out more, mm. because there is the cycle of the seasons that are slower than the cycle of the moon, mm. but uh, those are still cycles. So, trying to reflect yourself in the season. Um, can sometimes be the easier step than start reflecting with the moon because the moon is so 28 days and it goes quite fast but um, so for example you take winter and I always speak now I, I live in the northern hemisphere so I have to speak from here when we have winter here nothing is growing everything takes a rest but it's not like it's gone it's still underneath the snow or the Shale, the coldness in the in the ground is still underneath and it's resting it goes into dream space and so can we we can really take that time to rest and to re- withdraw our forces and think about what what do we want to do but not like in a hectic like i need to make a plan bucket list and all these mm-hmm. things it's like you can just be still and reflect if you think about our christmas that we celebrate that is the most like on the other point of stillness right now it's like it it is probably a very beautiful tradition somehow with gifts and food and being together but people are like denying gifts now no more gifts uh, and very not not all that food and you know um for understandable reasons because it's become too much and too hectic Mm. so what is it if we tap into the winter inside of us when it's winter and also if you put that in regarding to the moon you know just before the new moon we also go into winter into darkness into rest so for on the bigger side you start being living more with nature coming back to nature and um if if that's possible if you live in a flat you know, go out on the balcony or take a walk uh, and, and, and take, an, take a look around you. What is going on? How does this tree change with seasons? And, you know, take that tree 
every month and see what happens to the tree, what happens to you. Hmm. Well, when it comes to the moon, if you want to start working with the moon and the cyclings of the moon, then uh, the easiest thing to do is just to start. And that's, of course, it's easier said <laughs> uh, than done, but I think we can easily stay inside in front of all these spiritual, amazing, fantastic books. There is some subjects such as, for example, the moon. But to go out and sit, sit 30 minutes in the dark moon or in the new moon or in the waning or in the half moon or in the full moon, to do that action, to actually go out and search for her, that will make a change because um, you go out and search for her and she will be like, hey, yeah, I've been waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. And also, if you go out in the full moon and you will get this all this reflection of the moon, if you go out in the half moon, you get reflection of the moon. Even if the, the moon is just a small little harva, a little, <clears throat> what do you call it? Really? A little, <sighs> small, small little piece of, yeah. You will still get her shine, mm. even when it's dark. Crescent. Yeah. And that's what she's teaching us that she goes from being the most amazing fullness, expansion, beaming light, and you know, everything is like, wow, you can see everything. And then within the same cycle, she goes into complete darkness. And that just allows us to do the same mm. and not. Take PMS, for example, mm. which is, I think, of course, everything has also nutrition reasons and, and uh, uh, you know, how you live your life, stress, and uh, that, that part is also, of course, very important when you talk about spiritual, uh, ch changing the spiritual way of being, but to go out and be there with the moon and uh, let her teach you how it is to be a cyclic person the pms will change because you will feel like i'm taking time for myself i'm allowing myself to be actually if i'm just resting these this day before my period then i'm actually quite fine but if i go on and push myself on these days when i'm feeling i need to be a lone wolf then i'm fucked for a week mm. So PMS, it's, I would say it's also like your wise woman, your medicine woman talking to you, mm. <laughs> saying, hey, you stepped over your line again, or you've been uh, doing too much, or now you're doing that again, that things that you don't want to do. You know? mm. Why did you not say to your partner that you're tired, but instead you're doing this? Or... So I think... In the cyclic way of being, you know, if you start very mildly, just going out when it's the full moon for five minutes, you know, start there. And then you can add stuff. You can add time, you can add a ritual, you can add a ceremony or a meditation, oh, you know, but we need to be each other's or your own, actually. First step, you need to be your own nice boss. Mm. You know, that nice boss. That comes with the fruit basket of organic apples and, you know, gets you, gets you like nice water mm. to your office and, you know, good uh, health care or whatever. But you need to be that nice boss to yourself and start slow because if you go full on and then you can't fulfill it, then you just be like, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to abandon this mm. and be the abdicator of your own dream. Mm so true and and that's really interesting is there any like besides cool like stressing down and being in nature is there any herbs that you recommend for example to balance these these hormones in 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 the case of like pms or different yeah. herbs that can like you can work with to get there I mean, it all depends on the person. It all depends on what kind of menstrual cycle that person mm. has. It depends on when the PMS is coming. Is it just like a day before, or is it just is it when you ovulate? Does it is the duration from ovulation to P 
period. Um, so it's a little bit maybe hard to uh, actually just give like this advice, mm. but for everybody. But I would say, for example, like uh, uh, I, I use a lot of herbs in uh, yoni steaming, mm. vaginal steaming. So that then you would use the herbs in a steam bath uh, for your uh, pelvic. And that you will do once a week. Mm. So once a week, you would then uh, really uh, meet these herbs, meet the hotness, meet the water, and meet the steam. And you would once a week really slow yourself down mm. and really get in contact with uh, yourself, uh, your pelvic, your uterus, but also get in contact with Mother Earth. Because what you're doing with these herbs is actually... A transformation mm. right you're taking a herb from earth putting it into water and with fire maybe it's a stove most of the time but the fire that makes the herbs and the water transform into air steam that you are letting into yourself into your most sacred place mm. so doing that once a week or maybe if you you need to do it a few, few more days before your period or after your period. That will slow you down. And that slowing down, I think, is the best. I wouldn't say bad, but yeah, I think it's the best medicine for PMS to slow down. Mm. And then you can see where, where are the imbalances. Mm. Am I very sensitive to estrogen? Am I very sensitive to, or I don't have any progesterone? Is my cycle actually not? It's, is it very, very short or is it very, very long or is it? And then I think we need more keys and more knowledge to actually just say that this herb is good for PMS. Mm. Because say, for example, you have, um, you have very uh, dry, um, slam him, mm. uh, I don't know in English, um. very dry. And then I also forget, it. but it's uh, uh, yeah, like the 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 inside skin <laughs> or the yeah the inside of the vagina. Yes, I don't the know walls. The, yeah, the, the, the yeah. walls exactly. If they're very dry, mm. and that could be a trigger for PMS mm. also. So maybe you want to then take some herbs that could maybe help you to to get more moist, get more relaxation like you maybe you want to use moss mm. or maybe you want to use uh, nettles you want to use tulsi uh, to, to to maybe or, or, or calendula to get more moist and relaxation when you for example steam and maybe then you want to drink that as well so maybe the pms uh, can also be related to actually like like something something that disturbs you maybe it is not hormones actually mm -hmm. so um, but with that said there are herbs that are good for hormones like uh, uh, agnus castus um, uh, the clover i'm not very good in in in, in the herbs mm -hmm. in english um, red, red clover yeah maybe mm -hmm. yes uh, you have uh, arctic root mm -hmm. Damiana, mm. Ashwagandha, Astrala Goose, also Yarrow. Mm. And are these uh, and other words? Yeah. And are these taken? Because I know uh, there's a difference in if you take it like a fresh herb or it's dried or it's tinctured or it's a tea. Like, what is the difference there? Yeah, well, the difference is, for example, if you take an herb. Um, Herbs are quite slow companions. They are not a medicine that might get you a quick fix. Mm. You know, some herbs maybe like thyme or eucalyptus, if you have a or mint, if you have um, a lot of mucus in your throat or something, that might you know that might feel the, the you might feel clearer. It might it might solve something. You might feel lighter, but it's not going to get it to go away just like that. So you need to drink those allies for a while so if you drink them as tea mm. and for me i always used when i can i used fresh herbs but when i 
and I can't, I use dried herbs. I always make sure that they dry. Uh, the dried herbs are still smelling good or are not like turning very yellow or like losing its color or looking looking uh, um, like they lost their power. Mm. Then I give them back to the, to the land. But um, most of the herbs can take quite some long time being dried. And that's their, the beauty of them. Mm. And the tincture... Uh, the tinctures, I think, is good if you really want to get um, uh, like a stronger dosage, mm -hmm. because in within the herbalism, you know, some some people might need a longer uh, time of smaller dosage, and somebody might need like uh, you know more an intensive um, intensive uh, plan mm -hmm. of of uh, herbs. And tinctures are much easier to drink than like ten cups of per day or so for a certain amount of time so when you drink or take herbs um, through your uh, uh, food system uh, then that takes a longer time than for example when you steam because you don't have any um, you know it's not going to go through any system it's going to come straight up to your vagina so you have to maybe uh, also knowing that some herbs that might be good for, say, for example, uh, yeast infection. Mm -hmm. If you drink them, they're meant to be drank in a long time. So if you use them when you steam, maybe they might be a little bit too strong for your uh, pelvic mm. uh, or your vagina. So, And also, if you take uh, herbs on your skin, that's also quite a big uh, organ that takes up a lot. So there, if you take an essential oil, they are very potent very strong so you might need to take uh, uh, you, or you o o almost all the time need to have a dilutional oil so that you can use the, the oil, oil medicine mm. 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 and you mentioned so, you mentioned one herb that is uh, recently come up in my consciousness i don't know now it's showing up everywhere uh, damiana like wh what yeah. is that herb in its innate essence and what is it good yeah. for? Uh, it's, it's interesting what yeah. you're saying, though, because, you know, when herbs start coming mm -hmm. like that, I do believe that this herb has something <laughs> to say to you. That's how the plants are coming mm. to us. You know, when they want us to care yeah. for them, when they want us to uh, be like, hey, listen to me, I got something mm. for you. They're coming up in, uh, you know, Facebook mm -hmm. ads. They're coming up in... Um, in uh, in you know someone's t-shirt has a damiana yeah. leaf and so on, and so, on. <laughs> so i really think that that plant is trying to tell you something mm. um let me see it's uh it's an uh, i'm gonna have to look into this little yeah uh, book. sure um no but the the damiana is it's uh, it's like a w women mm. Uh, a herb, a woman's mm. herb, and it's used a lot in uh, in in the steam. Mm. The steam it's used a lot for um, when you have like a uterine fatigue, mm. like you have a um, well, it's not like a disease or anything. It's just kind of a a, a state where your uterus can come to when she's a little bit tired. Mm. And uh, maybe she's doing a lot of spotting. Mm. Maybe she has, you have very, very short cycles. And therefore, she might be a little bit tired. And that could be because, you know, we live in, so in a society where you're not supposed to, um, uh, you know, be home when you have your period. You're supposed to just go on like nothing has changed. Like you're not a bleeding mm. person. You don't have different hormones or mm. anything. So, yeah, you know, you do that for a long, long time then then your uterus will get tired or maybe contraceptives for a very long time or a, a IUE spiral that's um, different things that can really make uh, um, uh, a uter uterine tired mm. so you can use the it's like I think in Chinese medicine they would use it as a key stagnation mm -hmm. herb. like it would give you power it would give your uterus strength mm -hmm. and um, 
so it's it's good for for like if you have um both like spotting if you have like a that you have this kind of spotting that is coming before your period but it's also very good if you have very heavy flow mm. like really like a, uh, you know delayed periods with really like a heaviness coming or like a heavy feeling and these big, big heavy flows then you can use that uh, you can also use it if your period is gone missing mm. trying to start it you can use them and you can drink them and you can stimulate mm. them I also think that um, it's uh, good for the thyroid. thyroid mm, when you okay, that makes sense. And, um, yeah, uh, understimulation. Mm. Yeah, the deficiency. Def- so, I think uh, it could be. I mean, that's not my field. I'm not a, a hormone health expert, mm. but uh, uh, so when something when a herb is good for the thyroid, I'm always thinking, mm, what. What does it do? So this one gets the menstruation going, but it can also stop uh, uterus from leaking. Mm. So yeah, it has to be a thyroid. I'm, I'm thinking, but then I mean, I'm not. That's not my education. Mm. Um, but um, also, if you the Damiana is also, uh, it's also used if you have. I'm seeing here in my notes that. You can also use it to relieve anxiety mm. and fatigue. Mm. So it's a nerve tonic. Okay. So it's like energizing and, and give. Energizing. Yeah. Yes. That's beautiful. Um, anxiety. Anxiety. Mm. And uh, like to, to um, yeah, like chronic depression, but also like overwork too, mm. much, too much all the time. So it, it, uh, it's very good to give. Uh, to use, mm. but uh, could maybe not be used if you're too dry, mm. like in the constitution. Yeah, of the body. it depending a little bit on the situation, mm. but yes. Or if you have yin deficiency conditions, then maybe be a little bit too. Mm. Yeah, and it's very, and it's like you said, it's this is how we work with herbs. It's like you. The first of all, just knowing that it's nature's medicine, so you can you can get to know the plant, you can try to understand it and see how it works with you, uh, and also understand that it's very individual because we all have different constitutions and different conditions in our body. So one herb might work for you, but not for the other person. And I know you do special blends as well, depending on the on the situation for the for the person that you're working yeah. with yeah i do special blends but with that said i also realized that you know i'm i'm running a business as mm-hmm. well and a lot of people just want to buy blends they don't want to buy a steaming consultation mm-hmm. or any like priestess services or anything mm-hmm. like that so i also have blends in my web shop that are like you know uh not the, the, there are four of them that are stronger stronger healing mm. blends, but then there are uh, six of them that are like, you know, anyone can use them. Mm. If you like the herbs that are in them, they are not specifically like, not, it's not like a, it won't uh, delay your period or make your period calm or it's not like super uh, mm. dry up in the mucus and so on. So like, I don't know, in, 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 in Swedish we have this word, Cells mm. here, like it's more, you know, they're a little bit easier to mm. steam with. If somebody comes to me and I can really do a customized blend. I love to do that because then I can really tone in to them and to the plant. And I can sometimes I'm like, I think I'm done with the blend, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a herb falling out of my mm. cupboard. Like how can it fall out? Oh, <laughs> or I'm. I'm I like I need to go and pee and I take a break and then when I uh, come back uh, there is like um, uh, I can see like if there's one of my if it's uh, like a summer autumn time I can see and like there's this lone little plant standing there in my garden I'm like oh, yeah of course mm. <laughs> so I think it's beautiful how they actually talk when you tone into mm. them yeah but 
with when it comes to steam also the 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 warmth and the circulation and the fact that you do it repetitively mm. and you come and you really slow down that's also very sweet mm. medicine. Well, everyone needs that yeah the the, the mm. it, it is emerging the yoni steaming and it is really just a powerful way to connect with your womb as well so mm. yeah i would definitely recommend it and i i guess the, the easiest way is just to s- start trying it with with water and steam and then as we evolve also adding the different herbs and and uh, yeah. yeah yeah anyone you know if people are feeling a little bit like suspicious about i don't want to use herbs what is herbs i'm a bit skeptic yeah but just use water mm. And like in, our, in, 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 in Sweden, this is an ancient tradition. It's been called mm. Vikvad. And of course in, in Sweden, the country of written sources, we have written sources from 1734. It's been used. Mm. And, and um, we're basically just stepping into a line of ancestors that have done this method. And I... I think it's beautiful if we can do it at home and see if we can benefit from it. So, um, of course, there's still going to be people who are going to have to need need to go to the doctor and the gynecologist. And, you know, there's always going to be that. But this is also something that you can do at Mm. home. And um, it's self-love. It can be treatment at home. It's non-invasive. And it's not expensive if you know which herbs you can take. Mm. And it's very meditative um, as well. Very meditative. Mm. I have uh, on my website mm-hmm. which is found up com there is lots of like I've done like a do it yourself how you can do mm. it. That's great. Water. So you can just Yeah it. and you you besides your yeah besides your everything that you've talked about yeah you do your consultations for the yoni steaming so you help out through skype sessions like how to start you you get dive deep into the person's uh, query and and questions and and all of that so it's really extensive and then you also mm-hmm. create the special blends for that person and then also do uh, like rituals that is connected yeah. to that person so yeah it's it's really and now also you can actually, I actually have now, um, I have the possibility to actually meet people also in mm. person because I have a place in Stockholm where I can yeah, that's... have people come to me. So I'm really glad for that because I live out in the countryside and it's hard for people to get to yeah. me. But now I have a place where I am a few days a month or mm. many days a week, a lot of people come in. And I also do circles with many yeah. together or if you want to just have a ceremony together. And healing as well. You do the, the womb healings as well, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and you do, because many of the listeners uh, might not be in Sweden, but th- you, you do provide sessions online and all of that. So I will link all of your notes in in the show notes for this episode and is there any last thing that you would like to share have we uh, not tapped into something it depends on when this will be uh, broadcasted Mm. but um, if it's going to be any day soon or any week soon i'm doing online ceremonies at 9 30 swedish time every Mm. night for the collective and during this ceremony Mm. And I started doing it because a lot of my friends are working with people who have a lot of fear. And uh, it's like a, a place for us to meet and stay grounded. And um, there I'm also doing, uh, right now, tonight we're doing a new moon ceremony. Mm. So I'm also following the cycle. Ceremony. Yes, that's perfect. Yes, a link yeah. to your instagram and facebook as well so people can uh, connect with your different events and yeah th- really your work is so important and so appreciated by all of us uh, it really 
it makes a huge change in the world. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And I would love to have more conversations with you about this. I love this topic. <laughs> well, uh, thank you back, Shireen. Thank you for seeing me and thank you for inviting me. And thank you also for seeing this kind of work. Not everybody does it. Mm. So I'm really, really grateful mm. for that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this conversation helps you on your journey. And if you want to get in touch with Rebecca for a healing consultation, a ritual, just click the links in the show notes. You have her website there, her Facebook, Instagram. It's really beneficial to work one-to-one with someone with so much wisdom to get a tailored consultation, uh, advice, and it's really important to put your body and your health uh, on the very top priority because that's where everything comes from so i hope you enjoyed this thank you so much for being here thank you for sharing the podcast i'm very grateful so let's take a deep breath in through the nose together and exhale through the mouth Namaste.